I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a video about the meme gene relationship. Memetics is largely based on the idea that there's a relationship between memes and genes. The relationship is based on the idea that genes are the things that carry heritable information in organic evolution, and so we need to have some term for the carriers of heritable information in cultural evolution, and the term meme is the one that was selected by Richard Dawkins and has subsequently become the dominant term. Memes are like genes in a number of ways. They carry heritable information down the generations. They are subject to mutation and are capable of recombination. They change in frequency due to favourable or unfavourable selection or mimetic drift. They exhibit linkage and engage in hitchhiking. They are expressed. They are potentially immortal. Memes often compete with alternative forms, sometimes called allomemes. There are meme pools, much as there are gene pools, and meme flow is very similar to gene flow. Phylomimetics is the cultural version of phylogenetics and there's a memes eye view which is similar to the genes eye view and there is, or at least there should be, a science that studies memes in the same way that there's a science of genetics that studies genes. However, there are also a number of ways in which memes are not like genes. Memes are not made of DNA, they're not arranged in linear strings, there's no equivalent to a base pair, there are not a small number of codes which translate between heritable information and resulting phenotypes but rather thousands of such codes. Most genes are represented in the form of DNA, with only a small fraction of them being stored in databases, whereas with memes it's more the other way around, with most memes being in databases and only a few of them being represented in the form of DNA. Memes are not obviously divided into multiple chromosomes. Memes are often easy to change deliberately, whereas changing genes is often rather challenging. And genes are often transmitted with high fidelity, and probably most memes are these days as well, but there are some types of memes that are still subject to very distorted transmission. And memetic engineering is very common, whereas genetic engineering is still relatively rare. The best perspective on these similarities and differences is probably that genes and memes represent sections of heritable information in different media in which Darwinian dynamics can take place. Similarities arise from the shared Darwinian dynamics, while most of the differences arise from the differences between the media of inheritance. However, many people seem to insist on treating the relationship between memes and genes as an analogy, and this leads them to seek out the points of disanalogy, and then they often reject the relationship on the grounds that the analogy doesn't work in the way that they expect. The link between genes and memes is one of the main things that distinguishes memetics from one of the main strains of cultural evolution in academia, spearheaded by the researchers Boyd and Richardson. And here's what Boyd and Richardson wrote in their 2005 book, Not By Genes Alone. And I'm on page 81 here. Boyd and Richardson say, We encourage you not to think of cultural variants as close analogues to genes, but as different entities entirely, about which we know distressingly little. They must be gene-like to the extent that they carry the cultural information necessary to create cultural continuity, but as you will see, this can be accomplished in most ungene-like ways. And we even have one-time meme enthusiast Bruce Edmonds saying, I claim that the underlying reason memetics has failed is that it has not provided any extra explanatory or predictive power beyond that available without the gene-meme analogy. These kind of comments raise the issue of whether the gene-meme relationship is worthwhile or whether it just causes too much confusion. This seems to be a no-brainer to me. The relationship between memes and genes goes pretty deep and it's obviously worthwhile. The failure to embrace it may have contributed to the poor penetration of co topics like linkage-based memetic hitchhiking and the memes I view in academia. Boyd and Richardson's advice to think of their cultural variants as being different entities entirely about which we know distressingly little appears to be simply awful to me. We should be making use of our knowledge of evolutionary dynamics from genetics and not ignoring it and starting afresh. The relationship between memes and genes is one facet of a much deeper relationship between memetics and genetics. The main problem with understanding cultural evolution in the world is that people fail to appreciate the depth of this relationship. This problem extends into academia, so for example, earlier this year we have Peter Richardson saying this. We do know that culture is most ungene-like in many respects. Culture has the principle of inheritance of acquired variation, what one person invents another can imitate. We are not necessarily blind victims of chance imitation, but can pick and choose amongst any cultural variants that come to our attention, and creatively put our own twist on them. We don't have to imitate our parents or any other specific individuals, but can always be open to a better idea, our own invention or someone else's. 
These comments appear to illustrate a lack of appreciation of the depth of the relationship between memes and genes. Acquired variation can be inherited in the organic realm as well, such as when a dog gets fleas and then passes them on to their own offspring. That is not what biologists usually mean by the term the inheritance of acquired characteristics, but it is the same type of inheritance of acquired characteristics that is most commonly found in mimetic evolution. Acquiring an idea and passing it on is essentially the same phenomenon as acquiring a symbiont, such as a parasite, and then passing that on. Humans can pick and choose the diseases they acquire to some extent, as well as the ideas that they acquire. Both organic and cultural realms have immune systems, disease resistance, and disease avoidance. There is not so much of a difference there either, it seems. Animals subject to organic evolution are not necessarily blind victims of chance either. They too can choose which symbionts they form associations with in a very similar manner to the way in which humans choose their mimetic symbionts. And as for being ab able to choose parents only in the cultural realm, we don't have to acquire the same parasites as our parents, we can collect different ones. Nor need we necessarily acquire the same food symbionts. If a new foodstuff comes along, we can form a symbiosis with that foodstuff instead. Other creatures have similar food symbioses, for example ants, so being able to select who you inherit symbiont genes from happens in organic evolution in just the same way as it happens in mimetic evolution. So, the points that Peter mentions to highlight the differences between memes and genes and illustrate how memes are most ungene-like in many respects mostly turn out to be deep similarities instead once you properly grasp the concept of a meme-gene symbiosis. If you fail to grasp that, then it's true that mimetic evolution does then look very different from organic evolution, but only because you've not yet got a proper handle on the relationship between the two realms. This is not to say that there are no differences between the mimetic and organic realms, just that the similarities between them are overwhelming and abundantly justify emphasising the relationship between memes and genes. Academia will have to eventually embrace the relationship between memes and genes. A failure to understand this relationship appears to be the cause of many current conceptual problems, and indeed understanding the full depth and extent of this relationship is really fundamental to understanding how culture evolves. So if you're interested in the relationship between memes and genes, then there's more details about that in my book on memetics, which is currently available. So, um, enjoy.